Hello there, this is the Admin Junior, and this tutorial will be a quick rundown of animations and actions in Blender 2.53, the new beta. So, first thing to do is just skip straight through until you get to an appropriate animation um, uh, view, layout thing. So I've got mine here, I think I'm just going to stick with this. So the first thing you need to understand is the difference between the norm, you know, the sort of bog standard animation that you do and actions. Um, normal bog standard animation will appear in the F curve editor which is this thing here as curves so if I keyframe the position of this cube right now at, um, at the first frame that's using I insert keyframe and hitting location so if I keyframe this position and then move up to frame 24 my down in my uh, properties I have the frames per second at 24 frames per second so that's one second in and then I move the cube up over here somewhere and keyframe its location again you can see in this window here the F curve editor if you press control and up you can maximize it you can see here in the F curve editor that I've now got curves representing the um, values that I've keyed so I've got if we expand this I've got the X location here, which has remained static, there's no change. I've got the Y location, which has gone from 0 to 4.5 or something, and pretty much the same for Z. So these are actually represented, the actual motion of the cube is represented here by curves. And because they're curves, it gives a sort of easing effect to the animation. So we start off... Uh, like this, oh, I should have frame dropping on, um, and it'll ease in and ease out again because the shape is a curve. Now, for a lot of animations, this won't be appropriate. I mean, if you're doing a walk cycle, and that is particularly advanced, but if you're doing a walk cycle, you know, then y you don't want easing in and easing out for most of the um, for most of the steps. So, if you want to change that. We need to change what's called the interpolation, and that is basically how these um, how these uh, lines are how the frames between the two uh, keyframes are determined. So, in other words, um, at the moment I've got it between one and twenty-four. So Blender automatically calculates uh, how much to move the cube by each frame in between. Now, if I want to change how Blender does this, I change the interpolation mode. At the moment, it's a sort of bezier. It's a, it's a curve. So if I would like to just keep it completely linear, so just go from A to B um, within that time, without easing in and easing out, what I can do is um, make sure I've got both of these selected. Both handles by pressing the shift key and selecting both of them I then go to key interpolation mode and set it as linear and now you can see we have a straight line and the effect on this is rather interesting if we go back to the 3D view so if I go back to frame 1 and play this we've got a strange sort of animation now the cube is actually moving in a curved shape. It's not just going from A to B, it's moving in a curved shape. The reason for this is that only one of these values, only the Z location, is a, is a line. And uh, something interesting about curves um, in terms of animation is if you have a curve with a line affecting the same sort of property, in this case location, then you will get an overall curve. So I don't particularly want that at the moment, so I will 
set the interpolation mode for that as linear as well. So if you go back, that's control uh, up to um, zoom out again. If we go back, then we can see it's just in a perfect straight line and there's no easing whatsoever. Now, this is all well and good, but what if I want to use this animation again? You know, I don't want to, have to go back and keyframe it all over again, especially if it's long and complicated. I mean, if I want to add a rotation key, so say at the moment its rotation is at zero, so I set a keyframe for rotation, and then we can skip along to frame 24, and by then it's been rotated 180 degrees, and key that. So now we've also got in our F curve. Uh, view we can see the rotation as a curve again I mean I can go back and uh, make that linear if I need to but I'm not too bothered so I've now got a rotating cube going like this yeah this is cool but say you know what if I wanted to apply this to another cube the same animation or what if I wanted to repeat this animation with the, with this cube I'd have to go back and keyframe all over again. Well, luckily you don't have to. Because as we can see up here in the uh, dope sheet view, underneath the cube mesh, we have a cube action object. It is actually an action. Now, an action is those keyframes all stored in one object. So if we go into the um, NLA editor, instead we can see the current actions which we have on our cube at the moment we only have one cube action and we can't do anything so what do I do the answer is we hit this button here it looks kind of vaguely like a snowflake and what this will do is actually make it into a proper action if you go back to the um, F the dope sheet here, you'll see that there's nothing there. We've lost it. No keyframes, no action, nothing. That's because it's been turned into a proper action and put on a track here. So we can see we've still got it. But I can go ahead and delete this. And nothing's happened there's no keyframes anymore but I don't want to do that so we can do a lot of things with these actions now you can um, scale them which is useful so you can set um, their length just by doing that That's, that actually um, it extrapolates it so it's actually longer so it takes a longer time it's not just extended like that and of course we can move it along by pressing the G key like you would normally although these only have X and Y values so we can move it along the track and what you can do with these which is really cool so if I do set this at uh, zero what you can do is you can add multiple tracks so you can add another track I can duplicate this and put it on top of there and we have these sort of slashes here and this is, these are to indicate transitions and we can see it sort of backtracks and goes back up again so we've now got layered animations which is pretty cool now say I wanted to go back and add another um, action what I have to do is go back to the dope sheet here I think I'll go back to frame zero. And we can basically ignore whatever animations being currently applied to the cube. So I'm now going to monitor its scale. So to start off with, it's going to be very small. I'm going to keyframe that, scaling. And by the time we get to frame 30 instead, it's going to be pretty large. And again, I'm going to keyframe it. And here we are again, cube. We've got cube action.001 now, so it's created a new action ready for use. 
and we can see we've got our values here go back down to the uh, F curve editor it's in there there's our scaling values our keyframes and again I'm just going to leave those as uh, Bezier as a interpolation as opposed to linear so now I've got these keyframes and in order to turn them into a proper action I go back to the NLA editor and there they are again highlighted in red and there's the snowflake if I click that again I've now got a this says no action here and I've got underneath uh, oh, 002 I believe yep I have a rotation my sorry my scaling action here so the cube gets bigger like that and because of this layering thing I can put this in here in fact I'm going to do something cool with it for some reason it's gone weird the scaling oh, I can do something cool with it and add another track here duplicate it with shift D and I'm going to add this in here so if we watch this play it back you can see the cube getting bigger getting smaller getting bigger again so all of these animations have been layered on top they've automatically got transitions applied between the two of them so you can sort of backtrack like we're doing here which is pretty cool do a reverse and then go back forward again um, and you can layer all these animations on top of each other and, and in fact they are actions so what if you wanted to add a new one without having to duplicate it? You know, if I deleted my um, my two rotation, my two, sorry, my two scaling ones. If I deleted those two, what if I wanted to add them again? Well, you go back down to add, and you do add action script, and it's automatically found the two actions that we have um, down here. It's got cube action, cube action zero zero one. If you remember the, I really should name these. The scaling was uh, cube action zero zero one. So there it is, back in there. So what if I want to edit the action now that I've created it? I and mean, if I go back to the um, dope sheet, it's not there anymore. So I, how do I edit it? The answer is, <clears throat> sorry, the answer is. <laughs> the same as everywhere you look in Blender. If you want to edit something, you hit the tab key, and this puts it into a sort of edit mode. And here we have down in our F curve editor the curves for the um, action. So if I wanted, if I decided that actually I liked, I think I've selected both of those now. I don't know. I, I liked the um, interpolation being busy and I liked having that sort of curve shape then I can yeah I didn't select both of them there we go and that one pressing shift out of that hopefully interpolation mode busy there we go so now I've got my curve and I like having this sort of uh, curvy shape going on so I can change this now in the um, F curve editor down here and come straight back out of edit mode and there we have my curve shape being applied so this was a little rundown on animations and actions another thing actually you can do with them while I remember is um, you can actually split them so this cube action here this rotate this um, scale actually isn't it yeah I can go down to edit and I can click um, whoops I can click um, where is it split yeah um, it's staring me in the face split strips and this will actually split it in half so let me move it along the X um, so I can actually split it in half here so that it only applies up to so much and then does the rest here so you can actually split the action in half, that, that's cool okay as I was saying quick rundown on some basic um, actions in Blender and how you can apply them to your objects